So the sodium borohydrate is more user friendly, uh, so you don't need to handle it very carefully. Uh, but whereas in this case, uh, lithium aluminum hydride, uh, it needs uh, more strict conditions or environment uh, atmosphere, and uh, to quench that, it takes uh, careful attention. So, so when we use lithium aluminum hydride, uh, we should follow or we should be cautious. Because it can generate a lot of heat uh, when the reaction is done and when it is quenched, you should quench it slowly. Whereas in the case of sodium borohydrate, uh, after the reaction is done, uh, we, it, is, uh, it doesn't uh, evolve much heat, so it's easy to use and easy to quench after the reaction is done. Uh, and also the solvents. Uh, in this case, the sodium borohydride we can use the, the alcohol as solvent. In some cases, they can use water too. Uh, and alcohols are always uh, less costly, uh, so it's cheaper to buy. Right? So we can uh, reduce aldehydes and ketones uh, using sodium borohydride. Right? So if you look at the sodium borohydride, there are four uh, hydrides it can give uh, in the reaction. But so even when you do the math, uh, I think the the amount of sodium uh, sodium borohydride is lesser. Uh, so you will come to know when you do the math uh, for your percentage here. Right? Because if you see, it can give four hydrides. Uh, that will be useful in the reaction. Right? Again, uh, you should know the difference between the hydride and the proton. So that's proton and that's hydride. Right? So proton is deficient in electrons, whereas the hydride is rich with electrons, so it can act as a base or nuclear fire. Right? That's hydride. So the H minus is the hydride. Uh, that's what the sodium borohydride is giving out, and the H minus will attack the carbonyl group, right? And then it forms a intermediate uh, borate or borate salt. In this case, it forms a tetraalkyl borate. That means all the hydrogens are all the hydrates are replaced by the uh, alkoxides. As you can see it here, it forms a tetraalkyl borate salt. And once we add water or dilute acid, uh, it forms the alcohol. So in our case, we are using benzene. Uh, benzene has two carbonyl groups, right? and then both of them are reduced to the dialkyl. So it's named as hydrobenzoin. Uh, in our starting material, if you see, we don't have any chiral centers, but once we reduce that to the alcohol, right, uh, we have the so we have two chiral centers generated. Different, uh, different conformers are possible, such as RR as well as uh, MISO, and also uh, resinic mixture. So all the all those combination can be possible. Uh, but in this case, we we are not doing any NMR or any other study. <coughs> we are just doing the melting point because it's already been reported, and in the lab manual you have the melting points. So all we do is. Once we get the product, we do the melting point and uh, check the melting point that is the closest one. Uh, so you have melting points for various conformers, right? Um, so 
you have many points for all the conformers there. But when you write the lab report, uh, you should draw all these isomers in your lab report and then uh, say which one is the isomer that you got in your reaction. In the procedure, we are going to use a micro scale procedure uh, because there is a one initial it says experimental procedure, that's on a large scale. But we are going to perform on a micro scale. That will be 50 milligrams of benzyl and 0.5 ml of uh, ethanol. And uh, I would use the small alumea flask that you have. That will be like 5 ml or 10 ml, the smallest alumea flask. Uh, and it says to cool it in ice, ice bath. In this case, when you cool it in ice bath, uh, the starting benzyl may not be soluble in ethanol, so we are not going to cool in ice bag. Uh, instead of that, you can just use some uh, hot water from the tap uh, and then gently crush with the, the glass rod to make sure uh, all the benzyl goes into the ethanol. Uh, then add the sodium borohydrate 10 milligrams and swirl it and let it sit for 10 minutes. Meanwhile, keep on swirling. After 10 minutes, uh, and the rest of the procedure will be the same. Just like uh, add 0.5 ml of uh, water to the oil and then carefully heat the solution to the boiling on the hot plate. Uh, in this case, we are not using any hot water because our solvent is ethanol and we, are, we, quench, with, uh, we quench the reagents with the water and we have water in there. So it's fine to keep it on the hot plate in this case because it's water, so it's fine. Uh, and once you see that uh, boiling of the, the reaction, right, then you, uh, you add hot water, uh, about one milliliter, to precipitate the product. Um, so, in this case, you should add the hot water drop wise until you see some kind of cloudiness. So that means you have to take some water in a beaker and keep on the hot plate aside uh, for the precipitation, right? Uh, so once this, you see the cloudiness, uh, you have to cool that to room temperature, then cool it in ice bag and do the suction filtration to get your product. And then uh, please do not use the filter paper because if you use filter paper, it will take more time to get dry, drying the product. And if you have the disc that is on the suction funnel, if it, if it is bad or if it is like too much color, uh, you can rinse with some uh, acetone or methanol. Uh, if it doesn't go with the solvent, then you can remove that and get a new disc for the suction funnel. And once you um, filter it, let it sit on the suction for like five minutes. Uh, if it is dry enough, you can get the melting point. Most of the times it is dry enough, so you can get the melting point on the same day itself. Um, otherwise, you can wait for one week and get the melting point. And also, last week, if you did not get the melting point for your products, uh, you can do that today. And also, you can write the reports later on today and email it to me uh, by tomorrow.
Oh, you're good. Unless you just want to be in it. <laughs>